Omega, the beginning and the end. He is holy. Amen. Aren't you grateful for that? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hey, you may be seated this morning again. Welcome. We're so glad that you're here today at City Church. I'm glad that you've decided to get up and come into the house of the Lord. We're grateful to be here. Anybody grateful to be here today? Yep, yep. And so today we are coming in. Um, we are, are continuing and, and also ending, if you will, our sermon series on the life of David. How many of you have enjoyed that over the last few weeks? Yeah, I had someone come up to me earlier, and they're like, don't stop. It's great. Um, but, you know, we could talk about David forever. So much to cover. Um, but we're going to close it out today. And I just want to catch you up to speed of where we're going to start. But if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. If not, we'll have it on the screen in a minute. But we're going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 through 25. And this is what I want you to know about where we're at today and what we're about to read is everything that was prophesied in 1 Samuel 16. Remember, when David was taking care of them sheep, come on, and he came and he was anointed to be the next king. Well, now we pick up everything that was prophesied in 1 Samuel 16 is now happening in 2 Samuel chapter 5. David is now king. And I started thinking about all it must have been like for David to have this moment that he was now king. You know, all the twists and turns, all the challenges, all the things that he went through. But how many of you know that David went through it and he went through it well? You know why? Because he was anointed, y'all. Because how many of you know when you are anointed by God, ain't nobody can try to stop you. When God has anointed you, you can walk into rooms and you can, hey, you can walk into an interview and not even be qualified for the position, but when the favor of God is over you, when the anointing is on you, come on, then something begins to happen. And that's how it was with David. David had been through you know what and back. Come on, you we've, we've been talking about it the last few weeks, and now we see that the day has come. He is now king. But how many of you know that that sometimes, right, when you are anointed, there's different levels of anointing that takes place. And with the new levels comes more fire that you and attacks that you have to go through. So if you are going through some kind of attack today, some kind of battle, some kind of fire, if you will, I like to call it fire, that I want you to know that means, come on, that you you can lift your head today and say, I'm anointed, but, but I'm in some fire. Come on, I'm anointed, but I'm walking through some fire. So I thought I'd just title it today, Anointed and Under Fire. Anointed and Under Fire. So are y'all ready today? I mean, are you ready today to hear from the Lord? Here we go, verse 17. Slow down, Dana, I will. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it. And he, oh, I love this part, y'all. He went down to the stronghold. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Verse 18. And now the Philistines had come and they had spread out in this land, in the valley of Rephraim. And then verse 19 says, So David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? And the Lord answered him, Go, oh, because I'm going to be with you. No, it doesn't say that, but it kind of does. Go, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Prezim, and there he defeated them. And he said, as waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Prezim. And the Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men carried them off. And once more, check this out. The Philistines came up again the second time and spread out in that same valley of Rephraim. And so David inquired of the Lord, and he answered, do not go straight up to what you're going to do. I got a strategy. Here's what we're going to do. But I, what I want you to do is I want you to circle around behind them. Oh, yeah. And attack them in the front of the poplar trees. So as soon as you hear 
the sound of marching in the tops of them trees. Come on. I want you to move quickly because that will mean that the Lord, come on, somebody. The Lord has gone out in front of you and will strike the Philistine army. Oh, I think I got one more verse. There it is. So David did as the Lord commanded him. And he struck down those Philistines all the way, come on, from one part to the Gibeon all the way to Gezer. Because how many of you know that when God tells you to do something, when you seek him first and he tells you to go, you best to go and he will be with you. Bow your head with me. Father God, we love you. We're so glad to be here today. We're delighted to be in the presence of the Lord. We're delighted that you came with us today. And so, Lord, do whatever you need to do. Show up however you want to show up. Because you brought your people in here today that need to hear your word. The ones who are walking through fire. Lord, they're going through fire. Lord, they're lifting their head and saying, I'm anointed, but I know with new levels comes new devils. Like, I know that there's levels that, of glory that are going to come upon me, but I've got to learn that I've just got to keep my head up and walk through that battle and walk through that attack. And because I know that you're with me, God, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. I want to tell you something that might surprise you. But when I was growing up, now I want no comments from this little area over here. But, um, <laughs> but when I was growing up, I did not like school. I did not like school. But I'll tell you what I did like. I like to socialize at school. Come on, somebody. I like to go in there and just, burp, burp, burp. I mean, I would talk it up. And when I was in elementary school, I loved recess because not only could I play on the monkey bars, come on, I could also talk to everybody about what's going on. I'd say, hey, hey, what are you doing this weekend? You want to hang out this weekend? Oh, isn't he cute? Oh, oh, you know. And we would walk around, and, man, we just had a ball in school. But what terrified me, and part of the reason that I didn't like school, and I'm sorry, I know I have teachers here, and I know I'm married to an educator, but I'm just being real, okay? But, but, but one of the reasons why I didn't like school was because of tests. There was something about tests. I could study for days, and, and I could learn things and memorize things. I still can memorize things like it's nothing, right? But when it came time for the test, something that began to happen, I would panic, and I, I just would freeze up, and I just couldn't get the information out on the paper. Speaking of paper, can I really tell how old I am? And since I've done told everybody how old I am today, but can I really go back in time and say, how many of y'all, I'm going to see how old you are, remember Scantrons? Yeah, I don't think they use Scantron, according to my daughter, much anymore because, you know, they bad like that going to computers, got their own little laptops and all that. But back in my day, we had Scantrons. And I could hear the teacher now. Now, everyone, we're about to take the test. We want to make sure you understand how important this test is, that this test is worth a certain percent of your grade. So make sure you do good on this test, because if you don't, you're not going to do good in this class. Are y'all ready to take the test? And I remember the anxiety and this, the fear would just immobilize me. And I remember that teacher, that particular teacher, going up to her desk, grabbing her scantrons and passing them out. Down, take one, pass it down, pass one down, pass it down, pass it down. And I just remember in that time, I would start panicking. And Lord help me with the SAT and the AC test because you know what? They are timed. So not only do I have a test, but I got a time test. I thought I had gotten all over all that until I went to get my master's. And I took an online class. And I was in my office, and I was just going, and the, the big old timer came up on my screen. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I put a piece of paper up there. I said, oh, I got to focus. I got to focus. I'm not going back to where I used to be. But there's something about tests. And then I, I thought, man, in our walk with God, we go through so many tests, don't we? We go through so many attacks, so many tests, and a lot of times it's, it's like the, how I felt when I would see the Scantron. When I go through a test, when I'm walking in the fire, it's like I sometimes fear 
It mobilizes me, right? And fear comes, and I start to panic. And even though I know all about the Lord, and even though I can quote the scriptures left and right, even though that I really know that I can trust him and that he's always there with me, but there's sometimes when we walk through the fire, and it's just so, so bad that, that we just clam up. Has anybody been there? Where we just, we don't know what to do. We forget about all the times he's brought us through before. We forget what his word says we feel abandoned we feel frightened we don't know where we're going to go where we're going to turn if this thing's ever going to turn around and so I just want to let you know that it's it's one thing to see a scantron come on but there's another thing when we walk with God when we walk with God and we keep growing with him spiritually, what begins to happen is we go from one level to the next level to the next level. But that just doesn't come with roses and chocolates and cake. Come on. It, just, it doesn't just come with that. But there's a level of testing. There's a level of fire that we have to walk through with that anointing. It just doesn't just get handed down all the time. Come on. We got to fight for that anointing, right? We got to appreciate the anointing. And so what the Lord does in, in this particular chapter with David is David finds himself. He just was chosen to be anointed as king all these years. It just came to pass. Right? It just happened. He was raised up. You know, I think of him being, being raised up. He has gone through so much. He is now finally king. He's not gotten settled in yet. He doesn't know who's going to be running with him. Who's his leadership team? Come on. He don't know any of that yet. He's not had a chance to get settled in. And here he is in, in this situation. And the Lord says, you know what? I know that you've been through this thing and that thing and this thing. I know you've been faithful servant. I know that you're anointed, David. I know that you've been through, and everything you did was well. But I'd like to see this time, now that you're in a big leadership position, are you going to really trust me and follow me like you did before? I want to see. So I'm just going to throw a test in the mix and see what happens. So he thought, I want to see what he does with little opposition. Can he handle it? Can he handle it? So opposition begins to come his way. And, and the enemy comes up against him. He has to fight the Philistines, right? And this is a big deal because remember the king before him, King Saul. Remember, we had a lot of good laughing in here about King Saul. We had a lot of good moments over the last few weeks as we talked about him. But he could not handle the Philistines. He couldn't even, he couldn't smoke them, right? But now David is in this moment. He's in the test. He's in the fire. He has this enemy come up. But and he's in a vulnerable position. He's just stepped into this position. And then out of nowhere, because how many of you know that's how the enemy works? He brings things in our weakest moments. And, 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 and that's where he finds himself. God has thrown this test in his face and said, hey, can you handle opposition? So let me just break it down for you. The Philistines at one particular place, and when we started looking at the life of David, that David actually was on their team. He was on. He helped helped the Philistines fight different battles. But now we see that the tables have turned because David's status has turned. And so now that his status has changed, there are some people, come on Philistines, there's some people who once were his friends who now are turning against him. And so David, instead of fighting with them, they now are fighting against him. And I'm sure that there's nobody in this place that has ever dealt with having people smile at you and say that they're for you until you get the promotion. People that say that they're for you until your status level has changed. Because like I said earlier, with new levels comes, yes. And so here he is thinking, man, these people were for me because how many of you know people like to talk a good talk to your face, but as soon as you turn your back, they stabbing you in the back. They smile at you, I just love you, I'm so happy for you. And then as soon as they get home, they're on the phone calling up their friends. Can you believe 
that they got that position. Can you believe? I'll tell you what I'm going to do, man. She ain't going to be in that position long because I got some scoop up on her. So I'm going to go tell somebody what I know because, you know, she don't deserve that. But then the next day it's like, hey, what's up, girl? Man, you deserve this position so much. You ever been there? Ever had people to smile at you and then the next minute turn on you? That's where David was in this moment. He's not settled in yet. Next thing you know, he's got to fight the Philistines. Here they come. They're turning against him. They're coming towards him. As soon as he was promoted, they were smiling. Then they were stabbing him in his back. They were friends that were there once before, but now they're coming against him. And so verse 17, the Bible tells us that as they're coming towards him and against him, they're grabbing and as many men as they can to come towards David to attack him. But, mm, but the good stuff about verse 17, and y'all might not get excited about it, but I get excited about it, okay, is that the Bible tells us, thank you, Carl, that when he heard about it, he went down to the stronghold. Now, let's just, if you were in, in, if you had people coming against you, trying to attack you, I don't know where you would go. Right? I don't know what kind of person you would text, what kind of person you would call, but I will say that I guarantee you that a lot of times your first response would not be to go to the Lord in prayer. David has people coming towards him, y'all. He just stepped in this position. He ain't ready for this yet. And he just got in this position, and he gets word, and he runs. So I said, okay, strongholds, okay. So we don't really know exactly what the stronghold is, but we do know the purpose of the stronghold. So you would think that the, the, the stronghold would be a place where he goes to get all his military men together and kind of, you know, hey, let's go. We got to fight. We got to do this. But instead, what it's referring to is that David took this opportunity while they were attacking him to go spend time with the king of kings and the lord of lords come on somebody that was his first response he said lord i don't want to do anything stupid i don't want to before i do anything else let me just go talk to my lord and my savior and my king so the first thing i want you to know today is make prayer your first response and not your last resort see david went to him he went to him, and he got alone in a place, and he said, Lord, I need to hear from you. Have you ever found yourself there? A lot of times we don't go there first. We go there last. After we've tried everything else and nothing's working, then we go to him and say, oh, Lord, please. But David decided he was going to go to him first. I wonder what would happen if we had a church full of people come on, that are walking through the fire right now, if we could just get in our heads that that would be the first place we would go. That when we walk into work on Monday morning and all hell is coming against us, hold up a minute, I'm going to my stronghold. Oh, hold up a minute. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray right now. What would happen if we would go to him first instead of complaining about it with everybody around us at the lunch table? What would happen is we become people who are so consistent in our prayer life. What would happen is if instead of blasting all over social media about who did what and who did what, man, I got time. Put that mess up. Go spend time with the Lord in prayer and tell him what, who you think is stabbing you back. Tell him how you're feeling and ask him how you should handle the situation. You don't, come on, I'm not going to say this because I feel like I'm telling you what to do, but you don't need to go to social media and, and to blab it all out. Go to the Lord first. What would start happening if I could just get some people, come on, that would understand it? Let's not go to the Lord last. Let's start going to him first when there's a big decision. Oh, God, I need you. Oh, God, I need to know what your plan is. Lord, I don't want to do anything without checking with you first because I need to know that this is your will and this is your purpose. Man, I don't know about you, but if I have people trying to come up and fight me, I don't know. I'd be like, hold, hold up a minute. Well, first, I'd probably have something to say to them that, you know, I probably had to tell him a few things. I'd probably get on the phone and call either my husband or my father or my mother and say, what should I do? Can you believe this? <laughs> you know? But instead, David says, oh, no, let me run now to the strong. I can see him now. People coming against He's running to the strong. Oh, Lord, I just need to hear from you. Lord, you know what's going on. Should I take these bad boys on or not? Lord, I need you to equip me. I need you to tell me.
tell me, am I a fool right now? Should I go running for help? What should I do? I want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to go to the Lord in prayer. Because when we do that, what prayer does is it humbles us. It's a way of saying, God, I know I can fight, but I don't know if I can win without you. Lord, I, I know that I probably could get through this halfway, but Lord, if I had you, I could get through it the whole way. Lord, if I just have you on my side, I know I can get through this fire. I know I can get through this, but Lord, I need to hear because it's about your will, not my will. So David was a fighter. He was a worshiper. He has a way of teaching us in this passage, in this moment, in verse 17, that there's a difference between your strength and your source. Sometimes we confuse the two. You can be strong, but your muscles are not your source. You can be strong, but your sword is not your source. You're supposed to say, go ahead, preach it. You can be strong, but your job is not your source. Come on. At some point, he teaches us that we got to learn who our source is. Your degree is, ga is great, but that's not your source. Your source, ladies and gentlemen, child of God, is God himself. And when we tap into that source, oh, come on, it's the best source you'll ever tap into. It's realizing who our source is in times where we need extra strength, when we're running through the attack and the fire is on us. So David goes to that place and he says, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm a little scared right now. I got people coming after me. Lord, they once were my friends. I'm so hard. I'm broken by this. But Lord, I know that if this is your will, I want to do whatever you want me to do. So he goes to God first and God was good because God answered right away. How many of you know sometimes he don't do that? Sometimes we wait a little while and we're like, all right, come on, God. But he answers right away and he decides to fight the Philistines. So the, here they are, they're about to fight. But the interesting place is that they fight in this, and, and I, the more research I did, it's like this land was like huge. But of all the places that they're at, they go to a place called the Valley of Rephraim, which means the land of the giants. Now, why would the Philistines, right, why would they come to this place? Well, they navigated through this valley. It was the weakest area in Israel. This was an area that had not yet been conquered fully. This was an area that had the least amount of soldiers. There was a weak spot, and in this one weak spot was in this particular moment where they were. It was a place where the enemy decided to come. How many of y'all know that the enemy loves to come when we're weak? The enemy knows that you know your weakness, but he, ladies and gentlemen, also knows your weakness. And he likes to camp out. He's like, oh, so now I see their weakness. All right. So he gets his little backpack. Come on, y'all. And he goes and sits down right next to you and just pushes little buttons to get you upset because he knows what's your weakness. Some of you, that's what you're dealing with now. He's pushing your buttons. He's got you all worked up. And you come in here all upset and you can barely listen to this boring message. No, I hope it's not. But uh, you can barely listen because you, you got so many emotions going through your mind right now. Because the enemy knows what buttons to hit. And he knows where to camp. He, he knows what your weakness is. And so the enemy now camp, camps in this valley of Rephraim. And based upon the word that God gives David, David decides to take his army and fight the Philistines. And he defeats them there. But I just find this so wonderful because... In that moment, he decides to defeat him, and he wins, which is telling me that God can give you the victory that you need in the weakest moments, right, that you're struggling with, which is my next point. God delivers victory in your weakness, in your weakness, because David trusted the word of God. When he went to pray, he got a word from the Lord, and he could have walked away and said, hmm, this word don't make no sense. I don't know if God really means what he's saying here. Let me, let me think about it for a minute. He didn't, he didn't hesitate. See, some of you are, 
are hesitating. God's already given you the word. You know what I'm saying? And you need to act on it. But so he took the word. He took God at his word. He trusted the Lord himself enough that he trusted and did what he told him to do. So he took the word. Come on, somebody. And he says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to fight them and I'm going to go on the word that the Lord has given me. And what the Lord did is he used David in that moment to fight the biggest battle that he faced. He gave him what he needed. See, some of you need to take his word because when you take the word that God has given you and you trust him at his word and what he's told you to do, I'm going to tell you, you will know that ain't nobody did it but God. Right? You will know that, that God was the one that did it for you. That's why David was able to say God did it. See, you need some God did it moments in your life. Every now and then, you just need to sit back and say, you know what? It wasn't me. It was God. God did it. I don't understand this thing. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how I ever got through this one. But I know that God did it. Oh, I know that that particular health issue came. But I also know that it's gone down. Why? Because God did it. I know that that marriage was messed up. And we didn't know how we were going to tell the kids, come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody today. And you were all worked up. And next thing you know, boom, God showed up and all you can say is kids I don't know how to describe it but God did it come on it's those kinds of moments that we need to look back and understand that it was not us it was him it was the Lord Almighty who did it and nobody else could do it like that nobody else could heal like that no one else was anointed enough and could speak the words into existence like him I'm gonna tell you what you better give God some praise right now because God did it and if you're praying for something right now and it seems impossible, I'm going to tell you. You know what I've been praying for? I've been praying for miracles. I've been praying for healing miracles that take place. Because you know what? I love doctors. I think doctors are great. And I hope one day I have a child that just becomes the greatest doctor. But I'll tell you one other thing. Is there's no other doctor that's better than Jesus Christ himself. And if we could just understand that he wants to give us the victory. If we could just understand that when we are weak, we are strong through him. Come on. He is able. And I want to walk around and say, you know what? I know it looks confusing. And I know y'all don't understand. But God did it. God did it. It was a God did it moment. And that was the powerful thing about this text. Is David defeated them. And all he could say was, was God did it. I went to him. I sought after him. And he answered. And I did what he told me to do. And God did it. And he defeats them. But guess what? It ain't over yet. Them bad boys came right back again. And you know what? They showed up at the same exact place, that same valley that they showed up before. Here they come. And this time, right, we get word that it, it was a few years later. My boys have gotten stronger and gotten bigger. And here they come back again to come and try to conquer David like they did before. But this is the last thing I want you to know. Because, you know, you got to get this. Are you ready? Say, I got to get this one. I got to get this one, Pastor Dana. Number three, never get comfortable in victory. Can I repeat it for the people in the back? Sure I can. Never get comfortable in victory. Because just when he assumed, just like us, when we assume that we have it all together, oh, that's just exactly where there will be another attack that will come. And the text shows us that we can never become complacent on God's power and positioning in our life. Just because you won today doesn't mean that you don't have to fight tomorrow. It's interesting that they came back to the same place. I started thinking, why would they come back to the same place? Could it be that they came back in that same place because David failed to cover what was a weakness before? So maybe he thought, you know, I won this time, so why should I go back and try to protect what I've already won? Maybe the enemy would not have come back to David if he had done it and and protected what was weak before. That's why you got to take the initiative to protect every area in your life because the enemy always finds a weak spot. They come back. They're stronger than before. And I think it's so interesting that not only did they come back to the same place, but you know what David did? 
He went and sought the Lord again. He went and prayed to the Lord again. But the Lord says, "Uh uh-uh, I got a different strategy this time. Are you ready for this? He said, yeah, what do we need to do? He said, take your men and you go by these trees. What trees? Well, they're over close near the camp of the Philistines. You go there and you have your men sit there. He's like, sit there? Have them sit there and tell them there'll be a sign. Well, what kind of sign? Well, I'll tell you what, when you hear what sounds like marching in the tops of the trees, that's a signal that God is moving ahead. The moment of victory, this is what's so great, the moment of victory was not going to be based on what David saw. This moment of victory was going to be based on what he heard. And so notice that God did not tell David he was going there to get the victory when he saw it move. He says, you got to wait for it, and you got to listen. See, some of you are tired of waiting, and you're sitting there, you're getting impatient with God, and you don't want to wait anymore. And he's like, you, and, and the Lord's looking at us, see, you think the victory is going to come by what you see. But this time, I want to tell you, there'll be a sound that'll be coming. Oh, and when you hear that sound, come on. Uh, can you imagine them sitting there waiting, right? And, and they're, they're listening, and they're saying, okay, okay, I can't go by what I, what, what I see, but I can go by what I hear. Now, this is different for us, but we got we to gotta listen. Could it be that God is teaching you right now in the fire to just sit and listen? Instead of, instead of running your mouth, Maybe he's saying, you just need to sit right there and listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Maybe you need to listen because the next victory is coming by what you hear, not by what you see. And so a sound came. Come on, somebody. Woo! They were coming in, and a sound came, and they heard it. And it was in that moment that they knew that God had already gone before them. See, I believe that there's a sound in here today. Come on, can you stand to your feet? I believe that there's a sound in here today that God is saying to somebody, hey, I see the fire walking through. I see the attack. I know what the test brings for you. But, hey, if you would just sit still long enough, if you would listen to what I'm saying and not doubt me and who I am. See, I am the one you need to seek after. I have everything that you need. If you would just, if you would just learn to listen to what I'm saying, that I will go before you. Aren't you glad that we serve a God that goes before us? He's a God that's beside us, man. I keep thinking about that. Woo! He's in front of us, beside us. He's all around me right now. Come on. Everywhere my feet go, he's there. Whatever fire you're going through, whatever level you're going to, just know that God sees you, that you're anointed. Even when you're walking through the fire, will you bow your heads with me today? How many of you say, Pastor Dana, can you please pray for me? I'm, I'm going through the fire. Yeah, I see hands up everywhere, yo. How many of you say, Pastor Dana, I'm just clamming up, man. This, this, this test is coming. It's hit me hard. And I, yeah, yeah, I see hands everywhere. And right now, I want you to know that God sees what you're going through. And God wants to give you what you need to get through this fire. But he says, you've got to listen to him. Stop trying to figure it all out and listen to him. Because he wants to give you the sound. He wants to give you what you need to know that he's already gone before you. So, Father God, I pray over these people. Lord, and I I pray that you would be with them. And I, I just encourage them right now to just ask you to help them, Lord, in this next level, in this this testing season, Lord, in this fire season right now, God. Help them know that they are loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I just encourage you, if you raise your hand, even if you didn't, you just want to come up here and be next to me. Can you can you come up? Can we have a good time of just prayer? Can you come out of your seats this morning if you need, if you just, just need to say, you know, God, I, I need you. I, this one's, I want it to be my first response and not my last resort. Like, I need you, Lord, right now. Lord, I pray that, that you would be with all these people, Lord. Um, and I'm just, I'm going to pray again. Can I pray again? Sure. I know it's 11.32. I'll make it quick. But let's pray right now. Father God, I pray for every person that is represented up here. Lord, every person that's going through a test, a trial, Lord, is trying to knock them out. God, I pray that you would be with them right now, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would give them what they need to get through the fire, Lord. Help them know that they're anointed, Lord. Help them know that they're going to go to the next level, Lord. 
I pray victory over them, Lord. I pray you would help them in their weakness. Lord, we know that that's where the victory can be found. So God, we love you. And we thank you for these tests. We know that they're painful, but we need them to go to the next level. And we thank you, God, for your anointing power. In Jesus' name.